What happened to Phoenix Colden? Phoenix was originally born in California, but when her father got a job in St. Louis, the family moved. Growing up, she showed a lot of creativity and brightness, but she was the only child. Growing up in a deeply spiritual household, Phoenix's friends said she wanted to break away from a lot of the strictness that she grew up with and go to college and have some experience because she was mainly homeschooled. Growing up, her main passion was music, playing the violin and the piano, and she was a regional fencing champion here in St. Louis. In 2007, she enrolled in the University of Missouri, St. Louis, which if you hear people say UMSL, that's what they're talking about. After her enrolling, she eventually moved out into another apartment and her family thought she was moving in with another friend. And around this time, her family said she started to act a little different. And honestly, think about that. When you go from a sheltered environment to an environment where you feel like you have more freedom. Yeah, I, I can see someone started to act a little different. Eventually, her parents found out that she had a boyfriend. And her mother thought it was weird because every time she went to that apartment, she visited frequently. And there was nothing to indicate that Phoenix had a boyfriend at that apartment. And Phoenix's mother said um, after being around her boyfriend, Michael, that was someone she would not have, have approved of her daughter being around. Phoenix started to miss her college classes in which she failed to register for her next semester. Around the spring of 2011, Phoenix parents noticed money was coming up missing out of the family safe. But Phoenix was not stealing. It was actually her own money that she was taking. And they say it was around like $2,500. Not too long after um, Phoenix moved back home with her family, mainly because of finances. Just so she can finish school and then um, stay at home with the family. You know, so like less expenses. But her parents didn't know that um, she was not attending school. They thought she was. But around this time, she was not in school anymore. And returning uh, from school, a lot of her friends, they noticed that she was completely different. She started experimenting with drugs and being very argumentative with her parents, which is something she did not do before going off to school. Her best friend, Akira, said that, that Phoenix was not the person she knew because she was paranoid a lot. And she was convinced that she was being followed. During the argument with uh, Phoenix, Akira said that um, Phoenix actually pulled a knife out on her and brandished it. Soon after that, Phoenix was spending a lot of time in her car. She would be in her car for hours on her cell phone. And later on, her family found out that she had a second cell phone. One that was on a family plan and one that she was paying for herself. And her mother didn't understand why she needed so much privacy. On December 18th, 2011, Phoenix and her mother went to church. And the churchgoers and everyone there said nothing seemed off about her. And on a, their way home, Phoenix and her mother stopped at a convenience store. And that she wants things to get back to the way it used to be. After arriving home a little bit after 2 p.m., Phoenix decided to change clothes and go outside to play basketball. Just a little bit after 3 p.m., Phoenix grabbed her cell phone, walks past her father without even talking to him, and gets in her vehicle and sat in her car for a little bit and eventually pulls off after texting for a little bit. And her mother said it was strange because Phoenix never left without telling anyone where she was going. But her parents assumed that she was going shopping or visiting some friends. But sadly, this was the last time my parents saw her. Phoenix had a curfew at 1 a.m. and she always stuck to it. And when she did not make it home at that time and the next morning her parents noticed that, they knew something happened because she never missed her curfew. So Phoenix's mother decided to call the St. Louis County Police Department and dispatcher who answered the answered our call 
said that Phoenix is a 23-year-old woman and she can make her own decisions. But Godia knew that this was not her daughter's nature and that something happened to Phoenix. And Godia felt like that her age didn't matter. So the police, they ran the plates of the vehicle and it did not turn up anywhere. So Phoenix's parents decided to take matters in their own hands going to different hospitals around the city and giving out flyers. Dad went to a bunch of different television networks to see if they can get help. And they didn't get any help. And the family was frustrated because no one was talking about Phoenix's case. There was no news reports, no nothing. And I can tell you, um, just being a person from St. Louis, um, I actually never heard of uh, Phoenix Colton until recently. Which is sad because we hear so many other stories about missing people that don't look like us. And I can tell you now, before the end of this video, I couldn't find many news stories about this sister at all. Two weeks later, Phoenix's parents found her car. Her car was impounded on the same day she went missing. And the car was discovered just a 25 minute drive from where she lived around a little bit after 5 p.m which was about two and a half three hours after she left home and it was impounded an hour after it was found but the car was found over in east st louis and that was a red flag to her mother because she was wondering why why would our daughter go to east st louis and it was in one of the worst areas of east st louis which if people don't understand East St. Louis is technically not St. Louis. It's right over in Illinois. So they just went, she went right across the bridge. But there's a lot of conflicting stories on how the car was found. You have reports of people saying the car was found with the door wide open, engine still running. The actual officer who found the car said, it looks like someone just left the car there because they had ran out of gas. But also, when they ran like the DNA in the car, all the DNA was in there was Phoenix and her parents' DNA. There was no one else's DNA in the car. But the day before she went missing, because they had um went through a lot of the phone records and everything, the day she went missing, she had made 10 calls to her secret boyfriend, Michael, using her phone or her family plan. Remember, she had two cell phones. She had one that was on a family plan with her parents and one that she was paying for for herself. One of the final calls that she made was to her boyfriend, Michael, that lasted about 116 minutes. And there was another call that she made to Michael that lasted a little bit over a minute. And that was the last time that phone had made a call. When being questioned, those reports that um, Michael was being invasive, but also the police had a different story. The investigating officer said that Michael was very cooperative when questioning him. Some people believe she was taken by human traffickers because a lot of people don't know St. Louis is one has one of the highest rates of human trafficking around the country. There was also a picture of her that appeared on a uh, website for sex trafficking and the police believe it was just a, a nasty hoax after looking into it. But also other people believe that she just wanted to start fresh and just escape a lot of um, strictness and a lot of things she was dealing with in her life. Because remember, I said earlier that um, she told a friend that she wanted to just pack her stuff and leave. But her friend never said uh, where because she was never told where. But even with that, there was never reports of her having like belongings missing out of her room or anything. But there was also rumors that she was sending another guy named Mike and that the second cell phone was actually to keep in contact with him. The second Mike's ex-girlfriend was interviewed and she spoke on how Mike was violent with her and that how Mike used to look into Phoenix's case a lot, which is also think about that. It's kind of weird. He used to just randomly look at her case and see what was going on, see if they had any leads. But the girlfriend said that he didn't look like he was just like curious and worried about her whereabouts. And when the ex asked Mike about Phoenix and why she's so worried, why he's so worried about her. 
And he replied and said, why are you so worried about someone that's dead? But it's still unknown if he had anything to do with Phoenix going missing. But there is a video of um, that Phoenix posted. I can't really get access to. I can't really post it on here because um, Oxygen kept blocking it. But there's a video of her with like subtitles of her saying she wanted to start over. In the video, she looks sad saying she was ditched. In the video looks like uh, she was battling a lot. But if you want to see it, there is an Oxygen series about her case. They have the video there. In 2014, there was a reported sighting of Phoenix. One of Phoenix's friends from church was flying back from Vegas. Phoenix walked past her with a group of women and two older men. And she called her name and she turned around. And the lady who she says was Phoenix turned around and said, do I look like someone? And turned back around and walked away. She said that the men looked about 10 or 15 years older than women. And after the plane landed, she ran to the service desk and said she saw a missing person. The police quickly searched the area and there was no trace of that woman anywhere. And her friend said she was definitely sure that was Phoenix. There were so many tips came in, said she joined a cult. There was a bunch of stuff. But it was one tip that came in that cost the family a lot. Spent the remainder of their savings and hired a private investigator. And the lead seemed so credible. But it was just a dead end. It was a hoax. And this led to Phoenix's parents selling their home. Something I failed to mention earlier. She was adopted by her uh, father. And um, her last name was Reeves. And there was a lady who, 2012 who got in a, a place with the last name Phoenix Reeves. But, and also there was no birth certificate associated with that last name until 2012. But the lady who was occupying the house said she was, she's been living there since 2002. And the police was doing this portion of the investigation around 2018. But since going missing, her bank account has not been touched. No forms of ID has been renewed. And her digital footprint is non-existent. So what happened to Phoenix? If you have any information, please contact your local police department. I love y'all. Y'all stay safe out there. Peace.